Dzień dobry. Ja nazywam się Katarzyna Leon. Hello and welcome. My name is Katarzyna Leoniewska. Since 2012 I've been working for uh, the Stowarzyszenie Praktyków Dramy Stop Klatka Association. As you can see on the screen, uh, what we do is that we practice drama, we teach drama, we teach uh, and support people who um, uh, who experience uh, theater and, and drama classes in different situations. Today I'll talk about this in terms of using uh, theater and forum theater and uh, and preventing cyberbullying. Would like to share is uh, an experience from last year. Sieć Teatr Forum Przeciw Przemocy, the network teatr the Forum Theater Against Violence was uh, the project realized in Ostrowia Mazowiecka and Małkinia Górna uh, locations in Poland with uh, youth. So uh, first I'd like to tell you what Teatr Forum is. Here you can see a citation of its creator, Mr. Augusto Boal, which is which I find very uh, relevant for me uh, personally. It says that it doesn't matter whether whether the action is fictional. What matters is that it's an action. The concept is uh, somewhere in between theater and education. The artistic. Um, performance aspect is not that much important, is not as important as the possibility that there is no uh, differentiation between uh, actors and uh, and uh, audience. The, uh, the audience can enter the stage and uh, influ exert their influence over the story's development. It usually starts with a difficult situation, a difficult problem. Uh, that plays out for the first time. The spectators watch the story till the very end. And then, in the next stage, the same story is played once again. And then we invite the audience to uh, participate actively, to, um, to hit the pause button whenever something happens uh, in a way that the protagonist could uh, act differently. The spectators can enter and step into the shoes of the protagonist and propose their own solution for a situation. Propose a solution so that this doesn't uh, end up in a, as a calamity, as a defeat of the protagonist. Very briefly, I'd like to uh, tell you about where does the forum theater come from and uh, from where does these, this uh, idea of spectators entering the stage, stepping up to the stage, comes from. As I said, uh, its creator is Augusto Boal, a Brazilian uh, uh, playwright and uh, director who, who would work mostly with, uh, with the uh, disadvantaged, underprivileged groups, groups that uh, weren't given their voice or space in society to uh, present their, uh, their position and their uh, perception of certain situations. The watershed was marked in 1973 when, uh, where he staged uh, a, uh, a play in Lima, Peru, with his group. By then, there was no uh, audience stepping up to the stage. Just uh, the, the audience was only asked to propose solutions for the actors so that the actors could play them out and uh, thus change uh, the course of the story. However, there was, a, there was a, a, a black woman in the audience. She was proposing her solutions, and she was constantly, she was constantly uh, dissatisfied with uh, the representation made by actors on stage. So she, was, she became so irritated that she stepped up on the stage and decided to show them how it should be said and done Therefore, this happened, and since that moment in the Forum Theatre, the audience since then has been allowed to uh, not only uh, propose solutions to the story that's being played out, but also to participate and participate in all the developments happening on the stage. I've already told you uh, a couple of things about 
uh, the consistency of, of uh, forum theater. Now let's move uh, to the structure. You can present many conflictive, uh, problematic situation in the forum theater. However, the story must be um, embedded in, into certain structure. In the center, you see the protagonist. It's important that the uh, protagonist uh, be a representative of a social group or, or just any group we work with so that the the audience can identify could identify with with uh, him or her then we've got allies of the protagonist protagonist ie people that could support them however the protagonist may not be uh, prepared to to use that support and then we've got uh, antagonists people who exert uh, influence and pressure upon the uh, the protagonist and uh, tend to cause his defeat his fall you see this uh, graph graph with uh, with lightnings there and this is this shows us how the story develops in the forum theater when the protagonist tries to uh, tackle the problems they're experiencing and uh, and fails and then he tries he or she tries again and, and fails it again and after a couple of uh, of attempts, one, two, three, a maximum of five, let's say. After that, there is a, a final downfall, let's say, when he gives up. And this is the end of the story. We, we hit the pause button. Uh, we uh, pause the entire spectacle. And it's called the, the, the crisis scene, when we witness the, uh, the downfall of the, of the protagonist. I, I put the, uh, the the Chinese crisis sign, as you can see, in, in Chinese, the word for crisis has two meanings, actually. actually on the first, on one hand, it's, it means threat, and on the other hand, it says opportunity. At the point where the story ends, the protagonist does fail. However, before he had the opportunity not to uh, let that happen. So it cannot be a situation where there is a there is a, an extreme violence going on, and and the protagonist cannot really free himself or herself from that. We want this situation to be like uh, to be uh, to develop in such way that the protagonist could have a certain uh, a certain choice. Now I'd like to speak directly about the. Uh, project that we uh, implemented uh, between 2016 and 2017. It was the, the project called uh, the Network Forum Theater Against Cyber Violence. Uh, the project was uh, conceived in, in 2015, actually. We were looking for a, uh, for a theme that would uh, demonstrate the story of, uh, of teenagers, of youth. We developed certain uh, Need re in the research of, of needs and uh, and positions of uh, of the youth, and we discovered the uh, cyber bullying, which proved to be very much relevant, especially on the peer level. The spectacles uh, formula was based on the youth ideas, on the histories and the stories that they uh, experienced or. Uh, read about on the internet we used vlogs and blogs to to research that to uh, embed this story and into um into modern uh, contemporary youth uh, reality implementing the project in 2016 2017 we uh, were already based on the scenario that had been uh, drafted the year before at the first stage uh, all the uh, students aged 14 16 uh, could propose uh, already their uh, solutions. Then they would participate in a drama workshop that would uh, dive deeper into into the spectacles uh, themes. And then there was a workshop for uh, for teachers who worked with, who had worked with uh, the same teenagers at school, so that we could. And this was destined to give uh, a complex, comprehensive uh, support for uh, this entire environment uh, when uh, faced against uh, cyberbullying at school. 
the history that the, the history that we uh, showed in in the play was a 15 years old Peter's story. Uh, Peter or, or Piotrek in Polish uh, had his own uh, gaming blog. So the protagonist was supposed to be one that uh, could be easily identified with, that uh, does something worthwhile, a certain role model, and under certain uh, put under certain influence of uh, under certain peer pressure, and then a, a manager that tried to promote Piotrek as a vlogger. He, uh, in a way, subconsciously. Uh, becomes a perpetrator of cyberbullying because in, in a, one of the uploads he uh, uh, he um, reveals the pictures of his ex-girlfriend. And what struck us when we uh, played this uh, this uh, spectacle for 14 to 16 years old, uh, they told us that it was very real that these things actually uh, happen among their friends and peer groups. They would say that the uh, that our version of the story was, was, a, was a soft version of cyberbullying, that every day they would face uh, uh, much, much harsher material, much harsher situations that uh, definitely cross uh, personal boundaries of many people, more vulgar, more drastic comments also were posed. The language of this play was uh, certainly important because we did not uh, avoid, uh, we did not avoid bad language uh, or uh, or obscene behavior that we saw on the internet or uh, or uh, uh, we were told about by the youth that we had worked with. All in all. Um, most of the audience uh, identified with the protagonist. Many had their own uh, vlogs indeed. Many uh, were uh, spectators and then audience of other blogs. So it was very close to them, very relevant to them. What struck us were uh, very uh, intense emotional reactions. The possibility to experience this story and to step into the shoes of, of a protagonist was a very intense experience for for uh, these kids. It was uh, both on a, an intellectual level because they were they were pretty much uh, aware of uh, the cyberbullying, but also it also um, was also intense for their emotions on, on the emotional level. On one hand, we would uh, witness the voices and opinions that uh, said that you know the the victim was was actually to blame because uh, the girl had sent the pictures for to the guy uh, on her own. But I think that after going through uh, having uh, having witnessed their first uh, premature reactions, uh, we managed to. Uh, to reach the point where it became clear that the perpetrator was was responsible for his actions. I'll speak more about the uh, intervention, about reacting, but um, one of the most difficult uh, situations when uh, the, uh, the where the, the audience intervened was was the interaction with the with the girl whose pictures had been used. It was very hard to them to step into these conversations, but uh, I think uh, that was a very important experience for them. They could identify with the perpetrator, uh, feel that uh, it wasn't really, um, uh, it wasn't a cynical approach from his part that he didn't plan on that, but and in this way realize that everyone could could become a perpetrator due to one's own recklessness and whatnot. It was significant uh, for us to see that uh, to see the kinds of conversations the uh, uh, the audience uh, entered into with uh, the uh, the the characters. There was an important one with uh, uh, the dad, mom and dad. 
maybe not something that's that's really uh, relevant in their everyday life, but. Uh, we could see, we could witness uh, the need to uh, to look for uh, support from from the uh, adults. If somebody couldn't handle certain uh, situations, the the audience would propose referring, addressing the problem with the parents. There appeared magical solutions as well, i.e. Uh, uh, breaking the relationship, cutting the ties with the perpetrators and other people who would hurt them. But these were one of the first reactions, early reactions, when they, uh, where they, the, our audience had to uh, get used to the whole situation, get used to the fact that they were to propose solutions. After all, what uh, emerged were uh, interesting strategies uh, on how to handle difficult situations and also on taking responsibility for one's own for one's own actions. One of the Im important aspects of the forum theater is that you can step into the shoes of the protagonist only. Just like uh, in real life, you can only act uh, on your own behalf. So in the forum theater, you only uh, you only step into the shoes of, of the protagonist and no nobody else. Moreover, I'd like to um, share some conclusions from the evaluation stage. As I said, the, uh, the students took part in drama workshops as well. We applied many different techniques of how to get into the role, into the character. The aim of that workshop was uh, give an answer to a question of what can be done when one experiences cyberbullying and uh, also what happens even more often uh, when one, what to do when one is uh, a, one witnesses cyberbullying so many proposals emerged many of our participants uh, suggested to confront the perpetrators in their uh, in their survey in the survey that we conducted and this was a proposal that uh, were given both on the grounds of being a uh, a uh, witness and a victim, and also we saw, but also we saw some some more uh, uh, some less violent, let's say, um, solutions. So we discussed uh, uh, such solutions as uh, collecting evidence, uh, asking for help asking the adults for help uh, and other forms of uh, asking for professional support, such as a helpline, uh, psychological support, and so on. We also discussed uh, what we ourselves, as, as witnesses of cyberbullying, could give to, uh, to the victim of cyberbullying, what we could do not to leave such a person alone, because men, a lot of uh, things depend on, on the witnesses. The witnesses can escalate the phenomenon by uh, documenting it, sharing it, uh, liking it on the social media. They can also uh, hamper such, uh, such cyberbullying acts. That could be either via confronting the perpetrator or supporting the cyberbullying victim. Wrapping it up, I'd like to sum up uh, and uh, answer why we think the uh, the drama techniques are important in preventive uh, in preventive practices. First of all, uh, we use the the Culp's uh, cycle, um, and once we uh, get out of the character, we discuss uh, the experiences based on emotion and and, and uh, the acts uh, performed. We name the emotion tools that we have given to our, our participants, and then there is this, there is the application part, application in the real life, how to apply the tools. Uh, acquired in uh, in our everyday lives. So to sum up, the uh, the efficiency of this drama method, from my personal perspective, 
is that engages on a person on, on three levels, not only on the intellectual one, but also it allows us to feel the emotion and feel it uh, physically. By entering the character, we, one can, uh, one is allowed to test, to try the character and the behaviors in, in the world of fiction and then transpose it into the real world. This uh, physical and emotional engagement, I think, uh, is favorable for understanding and better engagement of the participants. Thank you very much.